persons. Neither will I go with dissimilars. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Wash my hands in innocence. So I will come past the altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous work. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody means, in whose hand is mischief. And their right hands for the bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. So redeem me. Be merciful unto me. My foot standing in an even place. In the congregation will I bless the Lord. Everybody say, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Be seated. Can you pass God's test of integrity? Can you pass God's test? Integrity. Integrity means committed, sticking to a strict moral ethical code. It's a state of being unpaired, soundness, the quality or the condition of being whole or undivided completeness. Can you pass God's test? I thank the Lord for the spirit of reassurance and the spirit of deliverance that the people of God should never be intimidated or be afraid because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Luke 21, 26 tells us that men's heart will fail them because of the fear in the last days. Today, many people are afraid and live in fear. They're afraid of being the victim of crime, terrorism, nuclear war, global warming, global pollution, sickness, death, economic collapse, and many other things. But Psalm 27 and 1 says the word of God teaches us this, the Lord is our salvation. Whom or what shall we fear? As Christian believers, our own heart should be like David. David was in exile and being pursued by King Saul. Even though David knew that he was the next king of Israel, he would not lift his hand against Saul. Saul had already been rejected by God, and his reign was coming to an end. But David's eyes, in David's eyes, as long as God allowed Saul to reign, he, would, he, he was still God's chosen man. And David would not fight against God's anointed. Therefore, David was a man who walked out to God's own heart. Paul the class, so in Acts 13 and 22, David, the son of Jesse, is a man after my own heart. David was not perfect in all his ways now. He had too, he had too many sins and failures in his life. Somebody can say amen to that. Even in all his sin, David was still a man of integrity. Integrity doesn't mean that we will never make a mistake or stray from our mission of serving God. It does mean that our ultimate goal, our final decision, always leads us back to the same place, a place where we will follow God. David is now in exile, running for his life, running from Saul, but he writes his songs to God. Asking God to put his heart to a test. How many of us really want God to test our loyalty, our love, our commitment, our integrity toward him? I don't know about you, but it is a fearful thing to know that God will test us by examining the motives and the integrity of your heart. I can only pray and trust that that, that, that I even can pass the test. I can only hope and pray that you yourself can pass the test because I love you and I want to teach you how to walk in your integrity. God does not grade us 
Too many of our youth today are being tested in our schools. They are, they, but they are being, they, they, they fail to get the basic knowledge and skills that would help them even to get a mediocre job. Teachers, the way they're being graded, being graded now, and I got some teachers and former teachers in here, is all about the tests that the government requires. So that's all they're doing is teaching them to pass the test. Instead of teaching them what they're supposed to be teaching them, basic knowledge and skill in order to reach their highest potential. Psalms 26, 1 and 2, David says, Judge me, Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I will not slide. Catch the people of God. Examine me, Lord, and prove me, test me, and try my reins and my heart. David was willing to stand up to God's test. Are you? Is your heart right with God? Are your motives for serving Jesus righteous and holy? Do we serve God because we love him? Or do we do it out of sense of duty and fear? Do we really love Jesus? Are we coming to the house of God because it's a place to meet friends and to show people how godly we are? Or are we coming to God's house because we want to praise him and worship him and serve him and serve his people? Which one is it? Suddenly, surely, it is a wonderful thing to be faithful to God and to work faithfully in the ministry and in the calling that God has called you to, that God has given you. But we must never forget that doing so is just fulfilling our reasonable service. Unless we come simply because we love God and want to work for Him, then our more motive isn't right, and our work will be no reward in the end. Children of God, listen to me. I, 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 my cry is, Lord, I want to be faithful because I love you. Amen. Lord, I want to serve you and your people because I know that is what you want me to do. Yes. Lord, I don't want to be what and where you want me to be without a clean heart. Yes. Lord, I don't want to slide into self gratification into selfishness. I want to be on your side. Yes. My cry is, Lord, don't allow me to slip into pride and love the praise of men. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody? Amen. Lord, my, keep my motive pure before you and my heart right in your sight. Yes. Can you pass God's test in your heart and in your life? If you can honestly say that, David, I never wanted what other people have. And I have never sought after the job or the ministry that God has given another person, and then just maybe you can pass the test. How many of you want to pass God's test? How many of you even want to take the test? Well, if you have ever ridden a horse or watched a horse being dragged and pulling a wagon, if you watch it in a Western movie, you will know that the reins are like a steering wheel for the horse and whatever the animal is that's pulling the wagon. Yeah. Are you willing to allow God to steer you? God will surely test your power of steering. He will try you. He will allow you to face some great obstacles in your life and some huge potholes in your road. He may even allow a few road signs in your life to disappear so that you really have to let him do the steering of your heart and of your life and you will wind up someplace where you really don't want to go. Psalm 23, 2 and 3 says this, He made me to lie down in green pastures. He made me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He made me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. The one thing that we must always remember is that God will never steer you away from the right path. You may not always see what he's bringing you. You may not always feel that he is there. But God will never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. He will not lead you in the wrong path. Of, but he will lead you in a path of righteousness and peace. And always, he's always going to be there. If you just learn how to allow him to do the driving, then learn to completely trust God, then we will always pass his test. 
here. Psalm, 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 Psalm 56 and that is, I will trust God and I will fear no man. We got to trust God in order to pass the test. We got to trust God even to wake up in the morning. We got to trust God even to sleep all night long. Hallelujah, somebody. How many people did not wake up this morning? How many people woke up with trouble on their mind? How many people woke up with trouble in their home? How many people sitting in here right now where they ever said it in his breath? Lord, somebody needs you. Yes. That's when we began. When we don't do that, that's when we began to stray away from God. Psalms 26, 3 and 5, David said, For your love and kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. And I have not sat with, listen to me good, y'all. I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go with this dissimilars. I have hated the congregation of evil doers and will not sit with the wicked. How many of us can say that today? <coughs> I'm curious about that word, Minister. Dissimilars. You know what that means to me, Sister Monica? That's somebody that just want to mess stuff up. Shelter in the time of storm. 